Good afternoon, this is Ben from the Academy of Gaming Film and Animation, and what we're looking at now is how we can take the animations that we just imported in and actually uh, assign them as a blueprint object. So actually have them as an interactive object inside of our Unreal scene. So I've created a uh, new scene, uh, also imported, re-imported a lot of my animations um, just to tidy them up because the last ones I did were a bit rushed. Um, so now when I click on them, you should see them, they're all here, that's my close animation. That's my open animation, and that is my rumble animation. So I have those three in there. I also have all of my um, textures in here. I'm missing the roughness one, but that won't matter too much. And I've got my skeleton here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just tidy up this directory a little bit, and just at least put all of my anims in one spot. I'm just going to move them over there and move to here. Um, now we're going to do a really simple thing. We're not going to look at like animation trees or animation blueprints or anything. We're just going to have some simple um, play animations when our character collides with it. Uh, if you want to take it to a more advanced level, you absolutely can and that will get a higher grade. Um, but that's really dependent on you <coughs> doing a little bit of your own research and, and pushing things a little bit further. So for now, we're just going to actually uh, look at how we can have a game object in here. So all of these things here, uh, we would normally refer to as components. A game object, or a blueprint class actor, is a container that all of these sit inside of. So if we open up blueprint class, for this one, we're going to use actor. Actor is just an object that is in the world that we can go up and we can enable input and have it receive inputs. Um, but if we want to do something a little bit more fancy, like what you saw on the screen before, my camera was rotating around and we could interact with it, um, then we might want to consider using a pawn uh, because it then could be possessed or a character. So there's all different types of blueprints and you gotta think about what you want. For this one, I would recommend though, just going with actor. So we've got an actor here, I'm just going to call it BP underscore chest and then double click on it. And that will open up this window here. For people who haven't seen blueprints before or maybe are a little bit rusty, this is our viewport here where we can see in 3D all the components we have. This over here is where we can list all of our components. Down here is where we can set variables for those components such as is this chest locked or not? And over here are the details and the events that we can call for each component. So the first thing uh, is we need our chest in here. So that first component we're gonna need is a skeletal mesh. So if we have that skeletal mesh there, um, that now allows us to bring in any skeletal mesh we have. Um, and this again is why I say you've gotta make sure that when you bring in your animations that they are all part of the same skeleton. If they're not, there will be conflicts. Um, it will try and play the animation, but it will have all kinds of breaking in it. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna to go to chest open for my skeletal mesh there. And as you can see, it is right there. So now, if I was to bring this into the level, I should see now this chest here. Uh, and if I press play, I can see that chest there. It's a bit big and I can walk through it. So we've still got a bit of work to do. So uh, first thing we're going to put in there is a box collision. Now this is not gonna be a collision for the chest in terms of making it so you can't walk over the top of it. This is going to be simply to activate those animations that we saw there before. So I'm gonna put this at the front of the chest, like so. Be quite generous with it. Don't try and make it too tight to the thing because when we do have collisions on there, we won't be able to access it. And we wanna make sure we now have this box selected. For now, these are the only animation, these are the only components we're gonna use. We're gonna use this to test, to see if we can get animation, and then we'll make it more advanced with lights and particles and all kinds of things. But just for now, this is all we need. So now that we have all of our ingredients, so to speak, we're now gonna actually start running the recipe. So if we go over here to event graph, we can now actually start putting in the scripts. Now, it can always be hard sort of knowing for the first time, where do I even start? How do I even know this? You follow recipes through like you always do from to the letter. Um, but if you are curious as to figuring out, okay, what can I do with each component? There are a few ways you can start experimenting. So for example, if I click here on box and then I scroll all the way down to the bottom here on details, I can see all of the events that I can cast. Now we're gonna go with begin overlap, but as you can see, there's a whole host of other things that you could start investigating and experimenting with. So when we click on this, that's gonna create this event. An event is like a scripted event. It's something that starts a script from hap uh, to start happening. So it's gonna begin when something overlaps this trigger box here. 
So that something that we want to overlap is going to be the player. So we're going to left click and drag out of this executive line here, type in cast to third person character. And then we're just going to plug other actor into object here. So now we have the third person character. When they cross over into this box, something can happen. Now, that something can be any level of property that I have on this skeletal mesh. So if I wanted to make it larger, I could. If I wanted to move its location, I could. If I wanted to make it visible, invisible, change its material, any of these things in that are in here, generally speaking, I can now adapt from here. I've got my trigger, now I can just set in what I want it to change. So, uh, one of the things we want it to do is we want it to play an animation. So if we left click and drag out of here, out of skeletal animation, we can just type in there, play animation. And from here, I can select any animation that goes with this chest. In this case, uh, I want the chest to open. So I'm then going to plug this into here. And let's give this a test run. We've got it there. We've got all the things we need. Let's minimize it out. And I can see it's updated here with that box. So I can press play. And when I walk up to it, there you go. It plays open. Now we can do the exact same thing for when we leave to make the chest close. So similar thing, I click on my box, I check to see what events I can do. I can see I've already used the begin overlap, but I haven't got the end overlap. This is what happens when the character walks away from the chest. So we're going to make it so when you walk away, chest closes. So I'm going to use the cast to third person again. And this time I'm just going to have play animation. You can see here that I've got mesh, it's already selecting that one there. Um, but I'm going to make sure it's actually this skeletal mesh here. You can just bring in another instance of it and go into the same thing, it's, it's all fine, but this just makes it a bit neater. Um, and then I'm going to go to close, just close, compile, minimize, play. And now, oops, now something is going wrong here. And as you can tell, it's because I walk into there and it plays the open, but if I leave too early, it's going to start doing this weird snapping between the two and everything. So something that you might want to actually sort of edit is putting a delay on the end here that goes for the length of the animation to make sure that it doesn't allow you to play the next animation until it's played through the whole animation. It's just, just a simple thing. You just left click here, delay, and it will be different for everyone because everyone's sort of animation is different, but I'm just going to put a delay in there of one. And so that just means that when I try to leave, uh, it's going to wait until the whole animation is played. I could put in some booleans in here as well that says, you know, do not play closed animation if the chest is open, do not play uh, open animation if the chest is closed, but we'll get to those sorts of booleans later. For now, in this video, I just wanted a simple, okay, when you're in there, how do you make it so that it plays the animation? So that's all I wanted from this sort of part of the video. I want to put that out there for everyone to try and get to that point if they have those animations. If you haven't got those animations, um, try and get those in there now so, so we can test this out. And then for people who already have that, I want you to start experimenting, just like we did with the street light and other things, to see if there's anything else you might want to put in this. Maybe add a light into there. Maybe make it so the light changes when you get closer to it, or a particle system. There are so many different things you can add to this to make it look just that slightly bit nicer. Um, so have at it. And uh, when we come back, we'll start looking at a few more advanced techniques we can do with this blueprint.